What was the big local story? Any of these stories touch you? I'd like to know if you had any firsts in 1997. Of course, A&E has announced, A&E has announced their, yes, Gary, what is this? Doing a dramatic entrance and you're showing me a cart. I'm sorry, uh, the Indians going to the World Series. Oh, uh, of course. A very, very significant story from the year. I just couldn't see what it, it said. Ging, 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 AL yeah, champs. It, it, it does uh, look like... Uh, Chinese. Okay. It's, it's the Indians. Well, thank you, Gary. We'll edit that part out of the tape and nobody will ever know the difference. What were the big news stories of 1997? What was the biggest local story? Which story touched you? Did you have any firsts in 1997? That's what we're going to discuss this hour. It's a truncated broadcast. 1997. It's about out of here. But there are many, many stories from this grand old year that we will never ever forget. News Radio, WTAM 1100. Rick Gilmore on News Radio, WTAM 1100. It was the shock felt round the world on the night of August 30th, 1997. News traveled the globe that Britain's Princess Diana was seriously injured in a car accident in Paris. But Brits, Americans, and Diana's admirers, the world overheld out hope that she would survive. She did not. Princess Diana had been out that night with her companion, Dodi El Fayed, after leaving the Ritz Hotel in Paris. The couple and Dodi's driver and bodyguard took off in a black Mercedes-Benz through the streets of Paris. Shortly after entering a tunnel under the River Seine at the Place d'Alma, the car crashed. The driver, Henri Paul, and Dodi were killed instantly. And Diana was alive for a short time. It was later that night that the world learned the People's Princess had died as well. We're interrupting our programs to bring you the sad news of the death of Diana, Princess of Wales. It was Labor Day weekend for Americans and many vacationers awoke Saturday morning to hear the tragic news that morning. British Prime Minister Tony Blair made a statement about the princess. She was the People's Princess. <laughs> and that's how she will stay how she will remain in our hearts and in our memories forever the british public was devastated at buckingham palace and diana's london home thousands of mourners left flowers and teddy bears in tribute to the most approachable of the royals these brits told us how much they'll miss the princess the royal family came under fire for not speaking publicly about the princess who was divorced from prince charles but bowing to public pressure queen elizabeth came out days later on September 5th to thank the people for their outpouring. Here she talked about Diana's role as Goodwill Ambassador and Mother. I admired and respected her for her energy and commitment to others, and especially for her devotion to her two boys. One of Diana's closest friends was singer Elton John, who re rewrote the lyrics of the hit song, Candle in the Wind, for the funeral. A few days before the funeral, yep, it was held at Westminster Abbey in London. You remember those bells like we played at the beginning. Elton John wrote a little song. She could connect with everybody. She made everyone feel special. Uh, and that, you know, the royal family has been kind of, through centuries and centuries, remained aloof from that. And they're brought up to in a different way from everybody else. And Diana broke the mold. I, William Jefferson Clinton, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. Now, back to Rick Gilmore on WTAM 1100. How about that? Believe that? That was President Clinton's inauguration. Believe it or not, that was this year, 1997. What was the big story for you? Which story touched you in 1997? Phone number is 578-1100. That's area code 216-578-1100. Toll free 888-723-WTAM. Now, it's important now. We have a lot of weather going on. The National Weather Service forecast on News Radio, WTAM 1100, a lake effect snow warning through Wednesday for Cuyahoga, Lake, Geauga, and Ashtabula counties. Tonight, brisk with snow showers and a few squalls. Overnight, one to three inches in the western suburbs. That was coming in on I-71. The two center lanes were clear, relatively dry, partially wet in areas. The outer lanes in bad shape. 
I did about 55 mile an hour all the way down here with four-wheel drive trucks blowing by me in the uh, hammer lane at about 65 or 70 as if, they, as if they can stop any better than I can. Upwards of eight inches of snow overnight tonight in the snow belt. It will be windy. Watch for blowing and drifting snow, a low of 20. Wednesday, tomorrow, snow showers, occasional squalls, one to two inches additional accumulation with six more inches possible in the snow belt with a high near 25. Tomorrow night, New Year's Eve, mostly cloudy. Low 15, currently 27 degrees in Cleveland, 27 degrees. And we're talking about the year 1997. It's gone. Which story touched you? I had a story just across my desk here. I'll get to it before we go back to our retrospect. Longtime Cleveland Radio Sports Talk host said tonight, I'm retiring from radio. Jeff Sindelar told his WKNR audience that he's leaving radio to concentrate more time on his private business. GF Sindelar Company, which helps businesses make sales to manufacturers. The 49-year-old Sindelar began hosting a sports talk show about 10 years ago at 3WE, now us, now WTAM in Cleveland, and went to WKNR to host a weekday show about seven years ago. j -Corps Communications in August signed an agreement to buy WKNR, another news event that happened this year. Sindelar said the radio station's ownership change had nothing to do with his decision. There you go. Another story from 1997. The year that's just about gone. Before I go back to the retrospect, let's go to Dan and Lenhurst. You're on WTAM 1100. Oh, yeah, it has to be the, the most revealing thing in 97 is you getting a radio show on this 50,000-watt powerhouse. You know, I was going to go into that a little, too. I brought with me the uh, Scene Magazine articles, which described how I uh, lost one show, and uh, I could talk about how I got another. You know, it's like uh, the proverbial story of uh, fighting back, you know, and gaining a wider acceptance. Maybe it's uh, true justice. Yeah, you know, that, and I don't know why Bill Clinton's still in office, but uh, after all the scandal, but... Uh, well, that guess, was a big story. Yeah, I guess that's for the ages. I don't know if he'll ever get impeached by the time he gets out of office, but... Yeah, you're doing well, Rick. I'm, I'm proud of you, man. I, 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 I think you've made a definite uh, step up, which is, uh, you know, it's well, like well, Rocky or something, you know? <laughs> We should have Rocky music behind yeah, me. Yeah, you should, man. I, you really should be proud of yourself, man. I, I, you know, I liked you on the old station, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's gone downhill since. Oh, and, do you mean me or the old station? Yeah, the old station. They replaced you with some stupid show about scratching records. Mm. But uh, I don't get much of a chance to tune in over yeah, there. Yeah, I don't uh, tune in very much here and there. But, uh, you know, yeah, it's been a good uh, last half of the year for you. I hope it continues in 98, and I wish you a happy new year. Well, thanks to you, too. And how about the biggest local story? Anything you can come to mind? How about Art McCoy? Uh, yeah, Art McCoy's a big story, but I think the bigger story was when that woman starved her child to death. Remember that story? Was that this past year? I'm trying to remember which one it was. Uh, There's been so much news this year. She starved, like, four of her children, and one died. Oh, I do recall that, yeah. And she was a big, fat woman, and she obviously ate herself, you know, and she wouldn't even feed her kids. Well, you know, some people just shouldn't have kids, eh? And then Hillary Kudnick dying, I guess, was a bad uh, bad deal. But it, that was, I guess, last year then, huh? Yeah, that was actually, I think, a year ago today. Today, yeah. Yeah, that was a shame. Yeah, that was really bad. Bad news. And, but, uh, uh, yeah, I guess the biggest worst story would be the tribe losing the World Series. Well, at least we got to it. <laughs> well, yeah, I know, but, uh, you know. I mean, that's a big plus. Coming in second, you know. I know. Nobody wants to come in second. I hear you. But, uh, yeah, Happy New Year, man. Happy year, New Year to you, too, Dan. Thanks for checking in all Thanks, over, over the past couple of years. Oh, I'll be listening. Man. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Thanks. All right, bye-bye. Yeah, Dan's a local caller. He's been calling in from, boy, I don't know, day one, it seems like. Let's go toll-free here on WTAM 1100. Hi. Rick? You're, yes, you're yeah. live. You're live on the air. Oh, am I live? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm having a ham sandwich. I didn't know I'd be on. That. Oh, you are. <laughs> well, my dear, I believe the story uh, of this um, of this uh, woman was that in '96 or '97. Susan, not Susan Smith, but the other, the, the, the landlady, the babysitter, the woman that the English woman. Oh yeah, that, I've got that uh, coming up here. The Louise Woodward. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think you know. I hate to say Rick, but I believe she really was at fault. I think she shook that little interracial baby. And um, me being interracial myself, I, you know, you have a lot of people with that mentality who don't. Uh, they don't want them living in their neighborhood. They don't want Negroes living. They don't want mixed races. And this woman, she looks just like that Susan Smith to me. And I hope that they find out. What really happened to that baby? Because I certainly hope they find out, too. I really hope they find out, too, and I appreciate it. Yeah, Louise Woodward, a shocking story we'll not soon forget. It's been a long year. 
And I wanted to mention, perhaps for someone, perhaps their last full year. But all in all, it's been a very, very good year. And the pitch swing and a high fly to deep right field. This ball's going to go way back. It is gone. A home run for the Cleveland Indians. And they have taken a 1-0 lead here in the 11th. Here's the Live pitch. Live from WTAM 1100 Cleveland, Rick Gilmore. That's me, Rick Gilmore, media darling. Another big, big story of 1997. Of course, the Indians going to the World Series only to be defeated by the Marlins. And, uh, well, that'll happen. A lot of big news. I hope we don't run out of time. I did want to try and get to these articles about uh, what happened to my show this year. Both my shows this year. All three shows this year. I had all kinds of big news in my life. What was the big news in your life? What was the big news story around you? Remember the Louise Woodward trial? One of the most watched trials of the year involved a 19-year-old British au pair accused of murdering the eight-month-old boy in her care. Louise Woodward was accused of violently shaking and murdering little Matthew Eppen in his Massachusetts home with a high-profile defense team that boasted Barry Sheck of O.J. fame. It looked like Woodward had a good chance of going free, but the jury bought the prosecution's case and found Woodward guilty of murder in the second degree, an automatic life uh, sentence in Massachusetts. And before sentencing, Woodward declared her innocence. I've never had money, and I never did have money, and I don't know what happened to him. I'm not responsible for his death. I didn't kill Matthew Eaton. But then remember, the jury's decision didn't stick. Because Judge Hiller Zobel reduced the verdict to involuntary manslaughter, then sentenced Woodward to time already served. Another big, big story in 1997. Let's go to Russell in North Olmsted. You're on WTAM 1100. Rick. Yes. The top story of the year has to be the unfortunate passing of Mother Teresa. That was bad indeed. That was, there was a woman who just gave absolutely everything she had to humankind. Yep, known as the saint of the gutters. Yep, and she'll always be remembered. And I'd say the top local story would be the emergence of Jarrett Wright. Talk about a 21-year-old kid, three years out of high school, thrown into Game 7 of the World Series, and his response was, okay. Well, here's a little piece of tape from an interview uh, offered by Mother Teresa. It is not how much we give, but how much love we put in the giving. To God, there's nothing small. Yep, you know, Mother Teresa will be sorely missed. A&E has chosen their... Biography of the year, Russell? I do not know that. Yeah, they chose it, I believe, today, and it was uh, Princess Diana uh, as the big story of the year. Well, such it is. Yeah, well, it's appreciated enough, and Mother Teresa, unfortunately, is one of them. That's true. Well, I suppose that there are people out there in India who appreciate her well enough. Yeah, well, people around the world will remember her. That's true. Well, you have a uh, happy new year, and I, pre too. I appreciate your call, Russell. Thanks. All right, bye-bye. You know, one of the stories that was uh, a big story around here when I first started, I wanted to mention. Remember the stabbing of the woman, the prostitute, on the west side? She was five months pregnant, and at 2 a.m. she bumped into a guy who was a knife fanatic, and he'd long fantasized about plunging a blade into a woman's back during sex, and he fulfilled his dream. This was from Monday, September 30th. This story, yep, happened September 19th. She told police she'd been a prostitute, but she was not working. He said he paid her for sex. I'll paraphrase the rest of the story myself. I remember it well now. He went to his apartment and called police. And left her lying there. He'd severed her spinal cord. Went to his apartment and called police to tell them that he'd seen a woman lying, bleeding, and police have caller ID, and went to his apartment and found him and arrested him and found knives and books about knife fetishes and all sorts of strange things. And it turns out later that I know that man. A little drinking establishment down in Tremont. Uh, I've actually sat and had a couple of beers with that guy, and uh, I don't want to give his last name. His name's Alan. It's just a strange case. It's a small town we live in, isn't it? Small world. Actually, and then you know what's unusual? He used to drink a beer called Old Peculiar. How appropriate. He's now doing time for that crime. Yeah, I thought that was really odd when I heard that. When I, when I heard it from a friend of mine, I thought, you know, you've got to be kidding. You've got to be joking me. No, that wasn't the case. Another big story this year was, of course, sportscaster Marv Albert insisted on his innocence. From the very beginning, he was accused by a former lover of sexual assault case was brought to trial in Arlington, Arlington, Virginia in September. To bear with me, I'm still getting over this uh, darn cold. 
After his accuser and another woman took the stand, Albert made a surprise move. He pled guilty to a misdemeanor charge of assault and battery. Afterwards, Albert told the media why. I just felt that I, I had to end this ordeal for myself, uh, my wonderful family, uh, my fiance, Heather, uh, my friends, the supporters. monkey loving but she said no way so he put her on the back and did it anyway hey mob albert yes m-a-r-b albert he threw her on the bed and ripped off her pants looped up his and stuck it in her ass hey mob albert yes m-a-r-b albert mob 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 albert Yeah, another great big story here in the year of our Lord, 1997. And remember this one? This one takes us back quite a ways. Remember the members of the uh, Heaven's Gate left this world in a self-described attempt to meet up with a UFO flying at the tail end of the Hale-Bopp Comet? Well, we won't know what they found, but the leader of the cult, Doe, left behind a videotape detailing their story. This is a portion of the tape on which Doe says it's time to leave the planet Earth. We'll title this tape Planet Earth about to be recycled. Your only chance to evacuate is to leave with us. The dead bodies of more than 40 men and women were found inside the posh Rancho Santa Fe, California home, which I believe is now for sale. Some Oriental investor wants to trade properties in March. News of the Heaven Gate uh, mass suicide shocked the nation. I remember, I did a radio program about it over on the uh, pinwheel station. Actually, kind of a parody of it, you know, actually. Members of the group that mixed computers with religion reportedly killed themselves in order to hook up with a UFO flying at the tail end of the hale Bob Comet. We won't know what they found, but the San Diego County Sheriff's Commander, Alan Fulmer, describes what police found when they entered the mansion. They were all uh, in a prone position on their backs with their arms at their sides, all deceased, all appearing as if they had uh, fallen asleep. Uh, they were all either on a mattress, a bed, or some sort of a cot. Yeah, I remember that was a very unusual story. And I will, I, you know, before we go to a break, I wanted to, I wanted to mention here uh, what exactly did happen to my radio program over there. That was one of the last uh, broadcasts I did until I went on to read in a, well, I'll just read what it said in the uh, scene magazine. A big year for me. Even in death, Alan Ginsberg is causing problems. The feisty beat generation poet who died earlier this year was the topic of the April 20th Gilly Show, a highly rated overnight program on WERE. A reading from Ginsburg's poem, Howl, led to the cancellation of the program allegedly in response to a single telephone complaint by the station Wednesday, April 23rd. What happened was they told me on a, on, a, on a Monday that I was number one, two shows, both shows, number one on that radio station, daytime, nighttime, anytime, and they called me the next day to say I was out of there. But just on the one show. During the final half hour of the late night program, Rick Gilmore, the show's host, read section one of the acclaimed poem in tribute to Alan Ginsberg in advance of the reading, which contained a reference to sodomy. The station provided a warning to listeners that the program's content may contain objectionable language. Gilmore, who has had his own show on the station since June of 96, contests that management gave assurance months ago that the only grounds for cancellation of the Gilly show would be violation of the FCC's safe harbor policy, which allows for use of certain taboo words during off-peak airtime hours, if used in a socially redeeming context. The portion of the poem which drew attention, I will not read that part. Uh, Gilmore main, <laughs> learned my lesson there. maintains no violations ever occurred on any broadcast of the program. We didn't break FCC violation. Station management clearly laid out the policy for board operators, he told. Anyway, it goes on to say, uh, according to Gilmore, called the station too conservative for, quote, that kind of language, unquote, and that I should have known better. My audience is pretty progressive, I responded. Anyway, it said right in here, right in print, that it would not affect the other program I did, Beer Talk which was on a Saturday night. <laughs> John Hill said, you'd think we canceled Seinfeld. He was the general manager over there. They got quite a bit of response. In any event, two weeks later, well, they sort of changed their tune. And from the scene magazine, the book has closed on the Gilly incident, or at least the doors of WERE have closed on Gilly. The controversial talk show host lost one of his two shows on the AM station due to the April 20th recital of Allen Ginsberg's poem. Howell was notified of his complete dismissal last Tuesday. Walt Taberski came back from vacation, and uh, I was told I was persona non grata. I was not allowed on the premises. And the poem I read, well, the quote I have in here is, 
If I thought I was gonna get gang raped, I thought they'd kiss me first. I felt it was a little unfair the way I was treated. Neither Tabersky nor the station manager, John Hill, had re you know, returned any of the phone calls, and I didn't find that surprising. That's the way it works at some smaller stations. In any event, true justice prevailed. My board operator over there was Gary. And he's my board operator here right now. And I got a job right here on WTAM 1100, the station I dreamed of working at my whole life. If I ever wanted to work at a radio station, this was it, AM 1100. So for me, at least in radio, you know, it's been a pretty big damn year. Rick Gilmore on News Radio WTAM 1100. This was the year that was, 1997. That's what we're discussing this evening. This was a truncated program, of course, because we were on after a Cavaliers game. I will be on Friday after the Cavaliers game again at 11 p.m. to 12. Do not forget to listen to Dr. Dina Dell from 12 to 1, and Art Bell takes you all the way from 1 to 5 a.m. right here on News Radio WTAM 1100, the National Weather Service forecast on News Radio WTAM 1100. Listen up. A lake effect snow warning through Wednesday for Cuyahoga, Lake Geauga, and Ashtabula counties. Tonight, brisk snow showers, some squalls overnight, one to three inches in the western suburbs. Thank goodness that's where I live. With upwards of eight inches in the snow belt. Some people love to get eight inches in the snow belt overnight. It would be windy, so watch out. Blowing and drifting snow will over around 20 tomorrow. More snow, one to two inches uh, additional accumulation. Six more in the snow belt with a high near 25. And tomorrow night, New Year's Eve, drive carefully, very carefully. If you're going to drink and drive, stay the hell out of my lane. Cold with a low of 15, currently 27 degrees in Cleveland, 27 degrees. Who could forget the Timothy McVeigh trial? Man accused of bombing the Oklahoma City Federal Building stood trial. After two months of testimony and arguments, the jury came back with its verdict. Timothy McVeigh was found guilty on all 11 counts against him. The murder charges ranging from conspiracy to use of a weapon of mass destruction to murder. Here's Court TV's Dan Abrams outside the Denver courthouse uh, reading off some of the guilty verdicts as they were being read in court. You'll remember this on June 2nd. Guilty of count one. Guilty of conspiracy to use a weapon of mass destruction. Count two, guilty. Use of a weapon of mass destruction, guilty. Count three, destruction by explosive, guilty. Do you find that the government proved beyond a reasonable doubt that the crimes committed by Timothy McVeigh resulted in the death of one or more of the persons named in the indictment? Yes. First question is yes. This could kick in the death penalty. Second question, answer is yes. Then the death of such persons was a foreseeable result of the defendant's criminal conduct. It was a verdict well received by the victims and victims' families. It took 11 days for the jurors to come back with a punishment for Timothy McVeigh. They determined that he must pay for the crime with his life. And we're still waiting to hear what's going to happen with uh, Terry Nichols. The jury's still out. We'll probably not find that out until the new year, 1998. And a big year it should be. There's going to be big changes in radio around here with JCOR taking over uh, almost every station in town of any importance. Let's go to Greg in Akron. You're on WTAM 1100. Yeah, what's this I hear about uh, Trevisano taking over WKNR? Now, Mike Trevisano is going to have a marathon on Monday from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. on WKNR to welcome their kickoff to the JCOR family. Now, are, are, is he leaving WTAM and, and Mike Snyder and everybody else? No, I don't believe so at all. No, what's going to happen is they're just, you know, trying to kick things off, and they're going to have Mike over there from, I believe, uh, 6 a.m. to 3 p.m., and then the limousine will whisk them back over here, and he will do his normal program, which will be simulcast on WKNR, his normal program, of course, on from 4 to 8 p.m. Now, what's going to happen to you? Uh, well, when the Indians uh, come on over here in April, uh, I guess they'll have to move me around somewhere. There's plenty of stations within their ownership, uh, or this one at a different time slot. Well, I hope they, I hope they put you on, and they take Dr. Laura off and put, the, but put Dr. Laura somewhere else because she belongs somewhere else. Well, I don't know. I, <laughs> but, I can't look into my crystal ball just yet, but I'll be sure to let you know and keep you apprised as soon as possible. But you know, even if they brought Rich Michaels back and put you two together. Well, I kind of doubt Rich is coming back. No, I know. I mean, I, I don't know anything that you don't, but, you I know. He I heard he's in Detroit. I heard he was somewhere in Michigan. Yeah. That's, uh, I did hear, yeah. Uh, Rick, I think you're doing an excellent job. I, I believe you're, you were number one at the other station. Of course, I'm down here in Akron. We couldn't pick him up. Well, yeah, the other show was, uh, I guess you could call it Empty Calories. It was a lot of fluff and fun, you know, so it's a little more serious on this station. But, of course, this is a news radio station, and that's the way it should be. Uh, you know what? Hmm. I think, uh, 
I think your station is probably one of the best. I listen to it all the time. Uh, I used to listen to WKNR sometimes, and uh, this, the talk over there was as, exactly as Roger Brown put it, just home, rah-rah, cheerleader type stuff. And I think Mike Trevisano and uh, Mike Snyder and uh, Kendall Lewis and the whole group, gang over there, including yourself, does a whole nice job because uh, you tell it like it is. And, if you know, if there's something going on, I can remember the day that uh, Art Nodell uh, was uh, selling the Browns. Oh, yeah, it was covered Baltimore. big. It was and covered. Greg, I'm out of time. i got to move. I appreciate all the nice words. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Yeah. We just, uh, we've got such a short hour here. We can't squeeze everything in. I'd like to thank everyone involved with this program. I hope you all have a happy new year. All your callers, all your listeners, I appreciate it. I like you oh so much. But, of course, you know, the big, big news story of the year is, without a doubt, the death of the one and only Princess Diana. <laughs>